There we go. Hello. So, James Hanvey, you requested a tutorial for how to hopefully do something like this, where we've got a ball, I call it an egg ship, um, throttling around uh, any kind of landscape you want, and what I'm doing is using the mouse to go left and right, up and down, and you can steer your ship. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So it's a third person perspective. Um, it's a bit like the first person mouse steer tutorials that I've done, um, but you wanted it in 3D. I think, I think this is the kind of camera you wanted. You talked about like an orbital camera. I haven't really got that, I've just got a camera fixed behind. Anyway, I'll show you as quickly as I can how to do this. And let me know in the comments if you want any changes or, or try and make some changes and then tell me um, how you get on with that. Right, so let's stop this. Um, and I'll show you what I've got in the scene. First, I'm just going to disable this uh, script. Um, remove component. <laughs> I forgot how to do that. Right, okay, so what we've got in this scene is some terrain. Make your own terrain, however, whatever you want there. I've just got lots of bumps and things, so it looks like I'm flying over a, an alien landscape. Then we've got our sphere. I've just given the, the sphere material. Uh, you've got your directional light. I've left that completely alone. And although I like to rename the directional lights, let's, let's name that Jim Harvey in respect to young Jim. Right. And we'll go green. We'll go green. Um, and we've got our main camera. So the first thing that we want to do is attach a script to our main camera. And we're going to have that script just follow whatever object we want it to follow. So if you go to create your C sharp script and then call it something like cam follow or whatever you want. Right, and it's going to be very short. Um, ignore this down here. This was my first try and I kind of moved the camera, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to fix the camera behind our sphere. So the first thing we need is something for this, the camera to look at. So we want a public transform and we're just going to call that a target. Okay, now actually we need to attach the script. So if we get our main camera and we attach this script, I've called mine cam follow, that public um, target will now be registered in the component here and what you need to do is then drag your sphere into here so that our script gets hold of the transform of that object so this transform belonging to our sphere is now populating this little space on our script which is attached to our camera okay so back to the script so now that we've got our target how do we look at it and, and, and move behind it well, Unity has already got some very, very simple to use functions to take care of that. So first, in the update function, which just loops around and around and around every frame, um, we're going to refer to this transform. So that's the camera's position and rotation. And we're going to use the look at function. And then all we need to do is to pass into that function is our target's position. So Unity takes care of that for you. You don't have to do anything with vectors. So what that will do is the camera, whichever way it's uh, pointing, it will look at, let's pretend this is my sphere, it will just look at that sphere. And then next frame, if our sphere is moved over here, it'll make sure it's looking at it straight away. So if you are thinking about having some smooth movement, you would want to play around with this. Right, and what you basically do is have the, um, have the, the looking movement kind of lerp or slurp between two vector positions. Anyway, maybe I'll do that in another video if, if you want to know how to do that. Or I think I've done that in um, some of the Minecraft tutorials where I've got some, what do you call them, like um, mobs and um, non-player characters. I think I, the way I make them look at you is using slurp or lerp. So if you're interested in moving cameras and, and, and that kind of thing, have a look at those tutorials. Right, last thing we need to do, we're just going to set the position of our camera so it's position in 3D space to 10 units, like something like meters behind our sphere. So to do that, we again refer to this transform, then its position, and then we're going to say that's going to equal, be set to the target's position. So imagine you've just moved the camera onto the sphere, but then we're going to add 
a vector, so that's like another like position and direction in space, times minus 10 units, so it's going backwards. So it's a bit strange that I put plus. I could do minus here and then plus 10 units, so it goes backwards, but it's it made more sense first to do this. So I'm going to plus what direction? We're going to go in this transforms forward. So if we're already looking at our sphere, then we want to move in that direction, just sliding backwards. So that's what's going to be achieved with this. It's transforms forward is going to be locked in the position that the sphere is facing. So that means we're going to move straight out backwards relative to where the sphere is like steered to. I've explained that very badly, but I think you get the idea. And it's going to slide back minus 10 behind it. There we go. Um, so that, that's all we need to do to get the camera system working. So we're just positioning the camera onto our sphere and then sliding it back 10 relative to the forward of the sphere, i.e. relative to where it's, um, <laughs> where it's looking at. Hopefully I've explained that, maybe over explained it. So the final thing we need to take care of is how to actually steer our, our sphere. And just a reminder, hopefully it's still working. Now we've got our green light. Um, if I press, I'm pressing W now, and that thrusts us forward. It's looking a little bit juttery that I'm recording. It was a lot smoother before. So we're moving the mouse left and right, up and down, and that steers you. And there's a lot of weird bobbling going on. That wasn't working. Sorry, that, that wasn't happening when I was not recording. So hopefully it's just a, a frame rate thing. Okay. So I've also added a rigid body to the sphere so that you can bump up and down against your terrain. And I've frozen the rotations so that what we're, going, what we're doing is moving the um, sphere using translations, not the physics system. Um, and so if you've got a rigid body, that sphere is taking part in the physics system um, in the Unity environment. So you, you don't want rotations being messed around with when you bump into the terrain. So I've just frozen all of that. And uh, there we go. So if you, <laughs> that might explain if you get some weird rotations going on if you add your own rigid body and things. So I remember to mention that. Okay, the script itself. So again, create yourself a, a um, script. C sharp script. I've called mine steer thrust because you're steering and thrusting. And attach it to your sphere. Don't forget to attach it. Okay, again, there's not much to this script. So, first thing we're doing is very similar to my first person mouse uh, tutorial. We're declaring a vector 2, vector 2, not vector 3, but a vector 2 um, variable. And we're calling it mouse dir for like mouse direction. So that's going to keep track of in each frame where you've moved the mouse to, and use that to realise what the user wants to do in terms of steering your ship. Next, we need a floating point uh, variable, a float speed, and that's going to be the speed of our vehicle. We we'll start off with zero. Then in the update loop, we've got two functions. You could throw everything into the update loop, but that might get messy. So it's better practice to to divvy up your, uh, your tasks into separate methods, separate functions. So I've got mouse steer first and then thrust. Logically, I think it's better to steer and then thrust forward. Anyway, so we'll go down to mouse steer first. So only a few lines here. So firstly, what is the new mouse position on the screen? So we're gonna declare another vector two, call it MC for like mouse cursor. And that equals a new vector two. We're using this new keyword because we're, we're creating a new vector out of some live data. So it's a vector two. And the first parameter is we're going to use the input system from Unity. The input get axis raw. Do I need the input system up here? No, I don't. Anyway, ignore that. Right. So that's the mouse X. Our second parameter get axis raw mouse y. Okay, so we know where the mouse is. And then we're gonna add that position to where the mouse currently was. So we get an, an idea of how much the mouse has moved. So mouse direction now means how much has that mouse moved 
on both axes on a two-dimensional plane. Final step for steering, we're going to multiply how much the mouse has moved on the X and the Y by the Y axis. So this first angle is going to be our yaw rotation and then the vector 3 right angle, which points like that, is going to be our pitch rotation. And um, so the mouse X, this is 2D, mouse direction is 2D, whereas what we're doing here is a 3D rotation, so don't get confused there. You don't even need to know this, just plug in these variables and everything should work fine. So what we're doing is setting this transforms rotation, I'm using the local rotation, just in case you've nested it in other objects. Um, and this script, remember, is attached to our sphere. There it is, steer thrust. So this setting of the rotation is affecting the, the ship. Okay, so we're going to multiply the movement on the the, the three-dimensional y-axis, which actually means that the mouse is x-axis on the two dimensions. Because as you move your mouse side to side, we want the, the yaw to move. But that's actually rotating in 3D space around the, the y-axis, in case that confuses you. Right, so that's the mouse steer done. Then um, we've just got to do the thrust. So, first we check for if we're pressing the W key. So if input get key, key code W, that means if we're pressing the W key, then I want to um, increment the speed by 0.9. So this is your acceleration. So you, can, you could have another variable and change the acceleration. For example, let's call that ACC for acceleration. And up here, if we say, public float um, ACC equals 0.9, so that's going to be a default. If you set um, a value up here, that will always be the default. But you can now change it. This should now appear in our steer thrust, now that I've saved the script. There we are, 0.9 is the default. So we could change this to 1.62, <laughs> for example. And now when we run it, we should get um, some more acceleration. Yes, there we go. And we're getting horrible bobbling happening. I don't know why that is. But it is quite fun to maneuver around this alien landscape. There we go. So, let's stop that. <laughs> right, so I've got 1.62. That's how to play around with acceleration and things if you wanted to. And to prove that this script is attached and is doing something. So where were we? We're in the thrust function. If we're pressing W, increase the speed by whatever value. I would suggest 0.9. Then uh, we're going to translate, that means move in space kinematically, this transform. So we get hold of this transform, which is the pink vehicle, and we're going to translate it by, now you've got to insert here a vector, so again, a direction in 3D space. I think I almost said a position in 3D space, it's not a position at all, of course a vector, it's a, it's a direction and a, and a magnitude, how much you want to move. So this transforms forward, just means which direction are you pointing, and then multiply that by its speed. So that's being affected by if we're thrusting or not. We're also multiplying by time delta time. That means it's going to be the same um, kind of performance and movement depending on, uh, irregardless of, not irregardless, regardless of what machine um, you're on. And then finally in our thrust function, we're going to decelerate or add some air friction so that the speed goes down. Because remember, if we're just pressing the W, the speed is just going to go up and it's never going to go down because we're not using the physics engine, we're using translate. So it's kinematic movement in here. So I'm just going to multiply the speed by almost itself, so almost by one, but just a little less. So every frame, the speed gets a little less. And so it's basically going towards zero. And that's it. So just remember, 
to attach that script if you haven't already done so to your um, to your egg ship. I'm just going to remove the rigid body and I'm going to reset this to 0, 0 0.9. Uh, save my scene um, and then play just to see if it's the rigid body that was causing that wobbling. No, it's definitely um, definitely my recording on here and all the lighting and everything. I haven't optimized this at, at all. Okay, hopefully James, that answers some of your questions or gets you going in terms of um, steering with the mouse a third person uh, character or egg ship. Thank you very much for your request. Hope that helps, goodbye.